Is there a wide-body aircraft capable of carrying nearly 300 passengers, flying 12,000 kilometers non-stop, yet not made by Boeing or Airbus? Of course, the C929, a long-range wide-body jet developed entirely by China, has just reached a remarkable milestone, opening a new era of three choices in the global aviation industry. No longer just a paper project, the C929 is a spectacular leap forward, a bold declaration that China is ready to compete head-to-head -head with giants like Boeing and Airbus. But how powerful is the C929 really? And is it truly a fully made-in-China aircraft? Let's find out. The story begins after the smaller C919 entered commercial service. China, eager to move up the technological ladder, set its sights on a bigger prize, developing a fully independent wide-body long-range aircraft. The target was clear, an airliner with 280 seats and a range of up to 12,000 kilometers, directly taking on the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. The program officially kicked off in 2015, at a time when China's wide-body expertise was still limited. To close the gap quickly, COMAC partnered with Russia's United Aircraft Corporation UAC, in a joint venture known as the CR929. The deal was straightforward. China would fund the entire project, over $2 billion, while Russia provided technical know-how in aerodynamics, materials, and engine integration. Final assembly would be in China, with primary markets in China, Russia, and the wider Asian region. Initially, it looked like a perfect marriage. Shanghai brought mass production capabilities and supply chain management, while Moscow contributed decades of aerospace engineering experience. But geopolitics had other plans. What happened? The outbreak of the Ukraine war in 2021 threw the partnership into disarray. Russian aerospace engineers were reassigned to defense projects, slowing the CR929's development. While Shanghai had met most of its assigned milestones, Moscow was failing to deliver. Rumors began to circulate. Some claimed that China had requested full ownership of Russia's engine technology, a demand that Moscow refused. By 2022, Russia announced it was pulling out of the joint venture. Therefore, the project was rebranded as the C929, now a fully Chinese-led effort. Russia would still supply certain components, but the majority of the design and manufacturing would now be in Chinese hands. Western observers were skeptical. Could Comac truly complete a world-class wide body without Russia's technical backing? Then the answer soon followed. On February 20th, 24th, the Chinese manufacturer made a stunning announcement. The C929 had officially entered the flight test phase, designed to international standards, and backed by fully independent intellectual property. Western media quickly labeled it a formidable new competitor one supported by the world's second-largest economy and an increasingly powerful industrial base. But can the C929 really pose a threat to Boeing and Airbus? By the way, everything's about to get even more surprising. But before continuing, don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe. Thanks a ton. Western analysts have examined the program and identified several standout features. When the first technical details emerged, perceptions shifted rapidly. This wasn't just an oversized C919. The C929 was conceived as a true twin-aisle, wide-body aircraft built for ultra-long-haul routes such as Beijing, New York or Shanghai, London. With a capacity for 280 passengers and a range of 12,000 kilometers, it not only eclipsed the C919's capabilities, but also became a real rival of the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. Indeed, one of its greatest strengths lies in materials and performance. This wide-body aircraft incorporates more than 50% carbon fiber composites, over four times the 12% used in the C919, matching the benchmarks of the 787 and A350. This heavy use of lightweight composites, combined with 15% titanium alloys, also comparable to the 787, reduces overall weight, boosts aerodynamic efficiency, and improves fuel economy. The combination not only makes it one of the more environmentally friendly commercial aircraft on paper, but also enables it to achieve its impressive 12,000 kilometer range. From a design and passenger experience standpoint, the C929's dimensions are equally ambitious. With a wingspan of nearly 65 meters, it surpasses even the Boeing 787, requiring a sophisticated aerodynamic profile to balance lift, stability, and efficiency. Inside, its 5.5 meter cabin width outclasses the Dreamliner's 5.28 meters and the A350's 5.34 meters, promising greater comfort, especially on long-haul intercontinental flights. Indeed, this extra space can translate into wider seats, more generous aisle room, and a less claustrophobic feel. 
a major selling point for international flights that can last up to 15 hours or more. Comac has also equipped the cockpit with advanced avionics, integrated a smart lighting system, and designed a flexible cabin layout, all aimed at optimizing safety and passenger experience. The production process itself is a feat of sophisticated manufacturing involving over 2.2 million individual parts, 3,500 completed test assemblies, and a real-time health monitoring system for in-flight diagnostics, a feature still missing from many current models. Despite making significant progress, can the C929 truly be called a made-in-China aircraft? Why say that? While Comac has always emphasized its self-reliance, the reality appears to be more complex. Recent reports indicate that this ambitious wide-body jet still relies heavily on Western technology. According to the South China Morning Post, Comac has signed numerous agreements with foreign suppliers, such as its partnership with Safran of France to develop core systems like the braking and oxygen systems, or its purchase of cabin door sensors from Crane Aerospace and Electronics in the US. This explains why out of nine core avionics suppliers, only four are Chinese, with the rest being international companies. This reliance can offer some immediate benefits, as Comac can get direct access to proven and reliable technology. Using components from reputable companies also helps the C929 more easily meet international safety standards, a crucial step for gaining the certification from EASA and FAA and the trust of airlines worldwide. However, the downside is very concerning. This dependency makes the C929 vulnerable to geopolitical tensions and export sanctions from the West, which means the fate of this aircraft belongs to others. This could not only disrupt the production schedule, but also erode the message of technological self-sufficiency that China is trying to build. Furthermore, not owning the full intellectual property rights to these critical components means this wide-body aircraft cannot truly be considered a fully independent Chinese aircraft. Therefore, the path to becoming a civil aviation powerhouse for Shanghai, it seems, is still very long and full of challenges. However, Comac has completely offset concerns over dependence on Western components with a crucial innovation. For years, that dependence had been a pressure point. When the West sought to tighten the screws, it restricted parts for the C919, a narrow-body jet that was roughly 60% domestically produced, but still powered by an engine jointly developed by the US and France. With the C929, Shanghai has moved to erase that vulnerability entirely, taking control of every core technology from the fuselage to the heart of the aircraft, its engines. The decisive breakthrough is the CJ2000, China's first domestically produced high-thrust turbofan for long-haul commercial jets. Originally intended for the C919, the CJ2000 was held back over concerns about stability and the complexity of certification. Now, the wide-body C929 will be its proving ground, with flight trials slated for 20 Oz 29. If those trials succeed, Shanghai will have crossed a historic threshold, achieving full independence from Western propulsion technology in commercial aviation. Technically, the engine is no joke. It delivers up to 35 tons of thrust, on par with the most advanced engines flying today, while offering significant improvements in fuel efficiency. This means lower operating costs for airlines and a smoother, quieter ride for passengers. Physically, the engine is a giant, a 3-meter fan diameter, an overall height of 4.55 meters, and even more thrust capacity than the 33-ton GNX that powers Boeing's 787 Dreamliner. Moreover, at cruising altitude, its fuel burn is notably lower than many of its international rivals, making the C929 one of the most efficient and competitive aircraft in its category. Capable of speeds up to 980 kilometers per hour, the CJ2000 is engineered for both performance and passenger comfort, with reduced vibration and significantly less noise, a key selling point against the Boeing Dreamliner and Airbus A350. For Comac, this engine is more than just for the new aircraft, at least for China. It's a strategic milestone. It transforms the C929 from an ambitious newcomer into a credible homegrown challenger in the global wide-body market. No surprise, then, that Western media outlets now frame the aircraft as a direct competitor to Boeing and Airbus. With high domestic content, breakthrough propulsion technology, and the political weight of Chinese industrial ambition behind it, this wide-body jet could help redraw the map of global aviation. In the short term, Boeing and Airbus won't see their order books collapse overnight. Certification hurdles, brand trust, and global after-sales networks take years to build. But strategically, 
The C929 represents something far more significant, China's transformation from aircraft customer into a direct competitor in the long-haul market. And here's the real twist. Comac can undercut on price. China has a proven track record of offering high-quality products at competitive costs, and the C929 is expected to follow this trend. With lower domestic labor costs, state subsidies, and a booming home market, the C929 could offer airlines a cheaper alternative to the 787 and A350, an irresistible choice for airlines in emerging markets, especially within the rapidly expanding Asia-Pacific region. In a post-pandemic aviation industry hypersensitive to price, that's a dangerous combination. This strategic approach, combined with strong government support, is designed to disrupt the market and force its Western competitors to react. The strategic endgame is clear. For now, this aircraft is a hybrid, part Chinese engineering, part Western components, but that's how every major aerospace program starts. Boeing once relied heavily on British Rolls-Royce engines, and Airbus sourced avionics from American suppliers. Over time, supply chains localize. Beijing's goal is obvious. Launch the C929 with enough Western technology to pass certification and win orders, then gradually replace foreign systems with domestic versions. By the time a C929-500, C929-600, or even variant 700 emerges, it could be 100% homegrown. If that happens, Boeing and Airbus would face something they've never seen before. A low-cost, wide-body competitor completely independent of Western supply chains, backed by the industrial might of the world's largest manufacturing economy. So, is the aircraft really made in China? Today, the answer is partially. Tomorrow, that could change. The next time you board a long-haul flight from Los Angeles to Singapore, don't be surprised if the safety card in your seat pocket reads Comex C929. What do you think about the C929? Let us know what you think. Thanks, and stay safe.